Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm going to be talking about the Jim Henson classic, Labyrinth. Um, it's this film in the middle right here. I know this three-pack comes with three other movies, but for today's movie review, we're just going to be talking about the one in the middle there, Labyrinth, uh, starring David Bowie and Jennifer Colony. They're both right there. Um, so my experience with Labyrinth, you guys, is this is a film that I saw large chunks of over the course of the year. You know, I would say segments and clips of it. Um, you know, I'm sure I saw most of those clips during my childhood, maybe saw a couple more in my teen years, and then maybe a couple more in my adult years. But I never really completely experienced Labyrinth until just recently. It was definitely a film that, um, you know, I definitely recognized the plot of. I recognized all the pop culture references of whenever, you know, like Family Guy or Simpsons spoofed it. Uh, but it was definitely a film that I never completely experienced. It was a film that um, I needed to see all the way through to really appreciate what it was. So, and I'm glad I did. So, uh, so for this film, Labyrinth, guys, if you don't know what it's about, if you're completely new to this movie, um, it, take, it was made in the 1986, I think. Um, it's about a young girl who um, is kind of sick of listening to her baby brother. You know, her parents uh, leave her in charge of this baby all the time, you know, for babysitting while they're always out and about. And so this girl just kind of had it with this baby. Uh, she has a very wild imagination, and one day she um, thinks about this fantasy world that could take the baby away from her, um, so she doesn't have to deal with her baby brother anymore. And so this fantasy world does take it literally and it comes to life. And they come into the baby's room and steal the baby brother. And now Jennifer Colony has to go into this fantasy world that is led by a character played by David Bowie, who's kind of the goblin king of this world, of this world of goblins and mazes and stuff. And so she has to figure out this labyrinth maze in order to get her baby brother back so that her parents don't suspect that... Um, the baby brother went missing while they were gone while she was supposed to babysit him for that night. So overall, guys, Labyrinth is a very good film. Um, obviously, a lot of people love this film. Some people might even claim it as their favorite film. Um, it's definitely probably one of more Jim Henson's, besides The Muppets, of course, obviously. Uh, one of his films outside of The Muppets that really kind of took flight for him, that really got him on the map as far as filmmaking goes and so forth, and really got his puppetry skills more noticed. Um... For my positives and negatives of this film, just to kind of jump right in, um, I thought this film had an amazing use of puppetry. Uh, Jim Henson just really knows how to handle puppets in this film, whether it's big creatures like Big Bird. Uh, there's a character here that definitely much was in the spirit of Big Bird as far as how big it was, how probably they had to do the puppeteering differently than with the smaller characters, because Jennifer Colony meets all these creatures throughout this maze that are very much in the spirit of the Muppets and so forth. Um, so just really amazing use of puppetry here, whether it's, you know, puppets that are just behind a brick wall or whatever to make it easy, or characters that have to be in full costume of people walking around in them, or in people who, you know, puppets that involve multiple, multiple puppeteers just to make the arms and the legs and the eyes move in a more realistic manner and so forth. Uh, so just amazing use of puppetry in this film. Labyrinth also explores many different worlds as Jennifer Colony moves through this labyrinth, and these worlds are very fun to explore. They're very different, very unique, uh, definitely involved a very creative mind while they were working on this, so whether that was Jim Henson or not, I'm not 100% certain, but whether who was in charge creativity, you know, with the creativity of this film did a really good job here. Uh, just fun, amazing worlds that they explore here that are just very creative and a lot of fun for us to see as a viewer in this movie. And then one thing I really liked about Labyrinth is it really showed the magic behind the work of Jim Henson, how he really knew how to take something as, as simple and easy as a small little puppet and really bring it to life and really bring it into a story that we could believe in and make them interact with people and so forth. Uh, so he really brought the magic to life with these puppets. And once again, you know, just like the Muppets and Sesame Street and so forth, uh, he brought his own magic to life into a film that really was worthy of the Jim Henson name just because of how good it was with its puppetry. And then this film also has amazing set design. They really did a good job with uh, making sure that these sets really look like we're in a different world somewhere with Jennifer Colony and these creatures. Uh, just amazing set design work that looked like they spent tons of hours and tons of days and possibly tons of weeks and months just working on these sets alone. It really was incredible to see 
all these incredible sets made for this film because there really is quite a few of them and they're very diverse from one another. Uh, just amazing set design work in this movie. And I also like the many unique puppet characters that we encounter throughout the course of the film. Some are big, some are small, some can fly, some are more comedic. Uh, some of them do musical numbers and so forth. Uh, just amazing range and choices they use of puppet characters in this film. And I like to see all the many unique characters that Jim Henson came up with for the course of this film. But for my negatives of Labyrinth, like I said, this film came out in 1986, so as a result, there is going to be some effects that don't quite hold up as well today as maybe some other scenes do, like with the puppets and so forth. Um, and unfortunately, one of the first negatives came in during the opening credits of this film. There's a CGA owl flying around the opening credits. Looks very dated. I'm sorry, it really does look pretty dated. Um, any scene that doesn't really have a full-on puppet, really, that was, you know, like a CGI effect or so forth, unfortunately does look pretty dated compared to today's standards. Um, whether that looked really good in 1986 or not, I'm not 100% certain. You know, the Star Wars films were already out by then. George Lucas's name was on this title as for handling the special effects worth and so forth. Um, but unfortunately, some of the CGI in this film does look pretty dated, and unfortunately, some of these flying owls in this film are a little bit victim of this. Um, as far as how the story goes for Labyrinth, one thing that was never really quite clear for me, um, and maybe it was and maybe I just missed it, uh, but the film never really explains how the Labyrinth got made. How come Jennifer Colony got into this world? How was this world made? How come all of a sudden she made up the story in her head and this world suddenly exists? Um, the film never really goes into detail of how this world exists and how she can get there and so forth. I really would have liked to see more of a backstory as to how was the labyrinth made? Was it around before she made it up? Uh, was this something that her parents made up that was now passed down to her? Uh, it really didn't make sense in that story regard on how this labyrinth exactly got there and how Jennifer Colony went on this adventure. There was also some musical numbers throughout the course of the film, and unfortunately some of them feel pretty unnecessary. I think Labyrinth works at its best when it really knows that it's a fantasy film. Um, you know, it's, it's okay if, I guess, if you want to have a musical number or so. You know, they have David Bowie in there, so of course they're going to do something music-related with him and his involvement in this movie. But um, some of these musical numbers really feel unnecessary. They kind of interfere with the story a little bit and interfere with the action and so forth. So some of these musical numbers I really was not a huge fan of. Um, and it was also pretty unclear, you know, even though David Bowie did a really good job playing this villain in the movie, um, his motivations didn't really feel clear to me. And I guess why I say that is, you know, if Jennifer Colony fails as far as getting through this labyrinth within a certain length of time, like he's making her do, what would he get out of it? What would he win out of this and it never was quite clear like why he really wanted this baby for something it was quite clear that throughout the film he really needs this baby to do something he wants and that motivation is never quite clear um so i would have preferred a motivation that i could get behind a little bit more um unfortunately the labyrinth film never really goes over that detail of what exactly the david bowie character gets out of jennifer colony possibly failing this maze and so forth so overall, I'm going to give Labyrinth an 8.5 out of 10. It's a very strong puppetry film that uh, really shows us just how good puppetry is and how CGI does, always doesn't make a great film that, you know, sometimes practically having something on the set like puppetry can really work to your advantage. Um, I like the many worlds it explores. It showed the magic behind Jim Henson's work. Um, the set design was amazing. The unique puppet characters, all of them were very interesting and unique. But unfortunately, some of the CGI does look a little dated. Some of these visual effects do as well. Um, how the Labyrinth got made, I would have liked to see a bigger explanation for, um, and a better one as well. Some of these musical numbers felt pretty unnecessary for the most part, and I really would have liked to see more motivations behind the David Bowie villain character. So 8.5 out of 10 for me. I do highly recommend it. If you haven't seen Labyrinth, be sure to do so. I finally got around to seeing the whole thing, so don't feel bad. Um, highly recommend it. A good, you know, directed film from Jim Henson once again. He's made a lot of them. Um, so if you haven't seen Labyrinth, be sure to do so, and I will see you guys here for another movie review.